Okay, so you are the heroes of Fort Rouse. You rush to the the castle. Uh, there's great cheer. All of the Duke's men are cheering. He comes out, leading his his wife out. Still has she still has some of the burial clothes on, but she looks fit. She looks healthy. She's smiling. Uh, she comes over in a most unladylike way. Uh, gives you each a hug, and the Duke grasps you, shakes your hand, and claps you firmly on the shoulder shoulders and permanently declares that he's forever grateful that he could never repay the debt that you've given him. Jezra comes out, you've got tears running down her face. Uh, all angsty teen, all of our goth makeups run. So is there anything that you need to say or do while you are the bell of the ball, as it were? Um, grab an ale. <laughs> yep. First round's on my lord. Yeah, so there's a wild celebration. Um all of the good meats are taken out of the cellar and all of the good beers and wines are taken out uh, to celebrate the magnificent resurrection of the Duchess of Rouse. And uh, Dane comes over to see you. He says, Well, uh, we have our next mission. However, you did express interest in going on a journey to Pavis. Uh, the Duke obviously is in your debt and figures due to the great stresses that you've undergone, you could certainly do with a few weeks off if that's what you prefer yeah. to do. No, we should go to Pavis because we need to see a man about a murder attempt. Murder, he says, because he's a human, you remember? Oh, well, there was this assassin, right? and. He fell into a mangle, and uh, we said we'd pop and have a word with his boss about, you know, trying to murder people, because murder's bad. Yeah, that is, uh, that's fine. We, certainly, you can uh, go and spend a few weeks in Pavis. There's a, the trade caravans are now going quite regularly between Fort Rouse and Pavis. Sell them what goods they can, because you dealt with the the brews, the pollution in the rivers cleared right up. <coughs> so there should be the crops should improve in a great manner. But they're selling a lot of like uh, hides and foods and things like that. the The Duke's quite a wily man, and he's got his accountant uh, important salt, which is the main thing that the tribesmen around here need the Agamori and the Moracanthi all want salt. It's the only thing they can't really produce. Metal's nice, but they go mad for salt. <laughs> Seems like a bit of a flaw in the plan of creation though, if uh, you need salt to live and there isn't much about. I guess it's ineffable. Exactly. Got to be Maybe careful with that ineffableness. Maybe they'll find a salt mine. Mm, There's a should... salt mine in the Big Rubble, a, a, yeah. a, a massive salt lick. Yeah, it's where the most of the salt comes from in this area. Uh, unfortunately, the Big Rubble's like a big, massive playground, playground, playground. full and... of monsters and dungeons, and it's where you go to have traditional dungeon adventures. And isn't it also a lunar prison? Can be. There's the puzzle canals in there, which is let's, a bit. Let's not go to the puzzle canal. Oh, but it looks so so much fun. It's a bit like the Maze Runner, but with Blade Sharp. Yeah. Right, so so this great feasting party, do any of you want to do anything particular? Bracey, what are you doing this party? I'll have a couple of drinks, but I'm not getting too drunk. Um... I'll get hammered and dance the night away with my nana. <laughs> Okay, so Brace, Brace, he hangs at the back. Are you still uh, feeling a bit uh, vulnerable just in case they decide to come around and beat the crap out of you? So you don't want to get too hammered in case you accidentally fall down the stairs six or seven times? Yeah. Okay, Ryan, what do you do in this great feast in your honour? Uh, like one or two ales max, eat loads of food, go to sleep. 
What a party animal, eh? If you've yeah, got a party, bring it here, Matty. That's what I say. Hey, I'm not here to party. I'm here to serve death to people. <laughs> on a, on a Speaking of which, did you have a look at that, the picture of oh, Hugh Matt? Yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, right, next up, Andy, what do you do in this great feast? You are honoured as well, even though you kind of slept it, you sort of rolled under the bed, you're only little and you're quite sneaky, so nobody actually noticed that you weren't there, to be fair. Oh, I'll take that. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> I, I, I shall stuff myself silly and drink until I'm just merry. Not falling down drunk or out, but, you know, that warm glow you get. Yes. I go over to Earl. Look him straight in the eye and ask him if he wants me to get the next remnant. You're kidding, right? <laughs> trust, bro, trust. That picture's mm-hmm. really cool. That's a figure as well. If you get the gods, if you get the gods walk board game, but it's about hundred quid, and then you get the expansion. That's a, a figure, and it's about six inches high. Oh, nice. Uh, and finally, uh, Davy Shashelian. In this feast, what what are you doing? I'll drink three or four pints, do a bit of dancing. Can I make an amendment? I'm not going to go straight to sleep. I'll eat food and then I'll watch carefully everywhere because something's going to go to shit and then I'll go to sleep. <laughs> you've, got, you've got no faith in me, have you? I've got no faith in every anything, ever. Well, this after, is we, we've got faith, we just know how Richie thinks. After someone who... <coughs> I've been playing with stabs in the back. You know, it hurts deep down. I, I mean, it wasn't much of it. It wasn't a stab as such. Uh, I mean, it was more of a, a gut wrenching poison. But I know what you mean. I'll I'll be staggering around with me and Nana both shit faced, singing "Love Hurts" at the top of my voice. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you were um, you, you you burst into "Love Hurts" and then you burst into some of the old. Uh, grey dog ones. They sound a bit like you know, um, strong Irish. So most people can only understand about six words out of the <laughs> entire song. Our eyes and the lovely boys and our eyes and our and the rivers run for it. Oh, and the, the yeah. wind and the go on the trees and the, the oh, eyes, no. beautiful eyes. Yeah. Shut up. Oh. Uh, and then the eventually, eventually, you saw the, the, the full power of uh, the, the grey dog dancing skills and singing skills. Your nana bursts into its rain and men because everybody's nana gets drunk and starts to sing its rain and men at the this top is, of their lungs. This is true. Uh, yeah, I actually thought that your. Uh, your nana when I saw that uh, horrible history so that's how your nana's based on oh right <laughs> uh, right so you, you you go to sleep you, you aren't ambushed poisoned or stabbed in the middle of the night everything goes okay for once you, you sleep the sleep of the just um, and then basically you hang on a couple of days you, you do your training montage you buy any equipment that you need to do and uh, then you pack to go to Pavis. So the trade caravan's going to be heading up north. Who are you taking with you? What gear are you really taking? Anything special? We should probably all go. Like, should we take the kid? I don't know. Are you taking? Are you taking Bobbin? Are you taking the kid? Are you taking your nana? Yeah, we'll all go. We'll go. It's it's, sure. it's a quick holiday, isn't it? Oh no, we've got a job, haven't we? We're on, are we on the job? Yeah. What well, what mission was it that he wanted us to do here? In Pavis, yeah. He didn't you oh, asked right. if you asked if uh, you probably can't remember, but uh, all right, no. Ago, you asked if you could go up to Pavis uh, for a holiday because you ha- somebody tried to murder McLovin. I mean, I bet you wish now that let, you'd let him. Yeah. You, you'd uh, you took them down. You found a, a mouse mask. And you found out that it was from somewhere in Pavis. And then you'd you'd asked if you could go to Pavis. All right, sorry, I thought the mission was in Pavis. Where's the No next... no The next mission, if you go and ask Dean, um, <laughs> is the Duke wants the Five Eyes Temple cleared out. Which is 
an enormous temple uh, further down the river and uh, it is uh, to the south here hang on see if i remember how you click is that dragon everybody nope well so do we want to go to pavis on holiday and yeah, set a load of assassins or do we want to go and clear out the five eyes temple <laughs> well you thought you were going to pavis and i thought you were going to pavis i thought we we're going to pavis on an adventure well it's going to be an adventure but it's an adventure at your behest rather than because you want to find out who was trying to murder McLovin, because you find out there's a hit, there's a hit on him, um, and the assassins had come from Pavis, but actually kidnappers who weren't assassins. Should we have a vote here? Them. Anyone not want to go to Pavis and prefer to do Five Eyes? It's a Pavis summer holiday. It is. Right. Well, no, let's go for a little bit of adventure. <clears throat> so it's a case of. Uh, Cliff Richard comes along in his big red double decker bus. Do we roll going on a Pavis holiday? <laughs> no, like use lot of roll in, on the top, and these feathers are blown in the wind. <laughs> Eunice Stubbs is there going, What yeah. am I doing in this? I, what am I doing in RuneQuest? I'm Eunice Stubbs for God's sake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got to get We've got to get Andy, Andy at the front of the cart. So you yeah. like the Titanic. Waving his wings in the air. So yes, so basically the next mission, but it's it's not a timed mission. The Duke has had enough uh the newtlands that keep attacking you uh, and the frogs and things that keep attacking you while you're trying to deal with the missions. Um the Duke's had enough and he, he's found out that the enemy tribe is holed up in the Five Eyes Temple, and you basically gotta go down there and like kick the front doors in, kill everybody and burn it to the ground. But but it's not a time sensitive one. It'll wait until you get back. So a bit of murder and mayhem, lads. Yeah, right, let's so, head ourselves down. Well, no, because so like you, the the Pavis caravan is ready. Are you taking Nana with you? And are you taking Bourbon, Nana, and Alan? Mm, is it a good idea to take? Um. Uh, yeah, Leah, Let's let's take everyone. We're gonna we're gonna find never assassins. suspect anything. It's yeah. it's it's not like you're gonna go to the doors of Pavis and and pull your swords out and go right. We're taking this town, you bastards, and start hacking your way through them. Do you know what I mean? You you go into a town for God's sake. Did you play this back in the day when we accidentally invaded Johnstown and started the lunar uh the they start right uprising five years early. I did not. In a pub. Oh yeah. No, that was uh, Martin Doughty's group. Sorry. It was with Mike from the shop, if that makes any difference. Right, so people you know in Pavis, I don't know if you remember from the journey across the the waste. I remember a little. Uh, was it my cousin or someone who lives in Pavis? Yes, your cousin lives in He's not he li not lives in Paris, but he's currently in Paris. Well, he was the last time you seen him. Right. So you you load all these people on. Uh, Nan's like, oh, I haven't been to Paris in such a long time. Yes, I remember when you were in Paris last, Nana. And I sus and I suspect they'll remember it too. But at least all the fires got put out. Um, and basically, you you set out the caravan heads north for a few days. I roll to see if anything interesting happens. Like interesting, and also. Uh, your debt is paid to Liar or the Griffin, if I remember rightly, from what happened. Our debt is paid, do you mean his debt is paid? His debt is paid to you, yes. Right. 
Well, I can take that emergency get out of jail free card out of my back pocket. <laughs> Damn yes, it, I was going to use that big escape at some point. And now you all die. I know a friendly griffin. Oh, wow. Okay, you actually... Right, the uh, caravan heads up through the Weiss Cut, past the village of Weiss. It's it's slowly... It's been purified. The, the bonfires have been there. They've killed uh, all of the infected wildlife and the infected plants and burnt them all. Uh, there's a few of the villages have been found. They've moved back in. And the place is looking much better. The climbing expert is still missing. The the named NPC type fella. And as you head north through the Agamor towards the Agamori territory, you see a large group of humanoids on foot off to the left of you. If you'd like to give me some scan rolls, please. What left? That left. But it's not near, brother. So I've got... I'm still and... trying to find it. We're the best of us, and yet rolls the worst of us. Pretty much. Right. So where do I look for this scan? On the perception on the skill sheet in the middle column. Right. So in the distance, Kian and just yeah. Kian and Chasselian. Uh you see a large group of humanoids. Uh some obviously uh naked humans and others are so seem to be beast foot walking upright on two legs. You you recognize them as a large company of Morocanth and they seem to be skirting across the, the borderlands of the Agamori. Hmm. Pointed out. That is questionable. We should keep an eye on things in case they get followed and we need to intervene, but you know. Right, so you you don't want to approach and after after Ken everybody's looking in all directions. Can like nudges you all and points and he goes over there. Uh, in the distance, it's uh, a large group of Morocan and herd men, like a large group. But it's getting the, the Agamori lines, right? Yeah. And we kind of did usher them to like stay away from each other. You did, yes. Hmm. Are they sk- if they're skirting the lands and they don't look like a war party, we should be all right. They might just be traveling. Yeah, you're not uh, totally all fair with what the Moroccans are doing. But they don't seem to be immediately causing any trouble at the moment. All right, okay. And then you push north uh, onto the main map even. Right, so are you heading up the River of Cradles or would you be heading to Horn Gate first and then north across the Long Dry? Is there a Tychora Tech Temple in Horn Gate? Uh, not a full one. There will be a, there's, there's a shrine to her just about everywhere, to be honest. No, we'll, we'll... Because she's a big part of funeral rites, so... Yeah, there'll definitely be a shrine there. So you, you yeah. head up to Hongi, you stop off because you, you're familiar with the place now. Yeah. The trade caravan gives the the party. And unless you want to do anything, it basically pushes north until it gets to Paris. Yeah. Right, okay, so you join the King's Road at the entrance to Paris. 
Oh, sorry, retcon, Andy. Uh, before you left, the Duke had called you into the office. Right. And uh, there's two big burly guards standing there either side of the door as you walk in. If you've never seen the Duke looks quite so happy as he has been lately. Uh, he says, Roal and... Um, I've got words from my friends in the Lunar Court that, uh, how can I put this? There may be some trouble with my people uh, and your folk. There is apparently some sort of unrest going on, and the word is that uh, some of the government have decided to lay blame upon the, the race of the ducks. Um, so you may need this, and he, he slides for. It's got his uh, ducal stamp stamped on it in wax. He says, uh, "I'm not sure if you're lettered, uh, my feathered friend, but uh, it's basically it's basically paperwork to say that you're in my employ and that you aren't to be unduly hassled by uh, any lunar troops or governors or anything like that." Uh, unfortunately, as you know, I'm not particularly liked in certain circles, so it may not be a a global covering, but at least it should stop you being accosted by troops in the streets. And he gives you this this scroll. I uh, thank him very much and took it away. Well, wherever I took things away. <laughs> Do you know what I tend to think? <laughs> It, it mysteriously vanishes uh, in amongst these feathers and leather. With a slight quack. Quack! And, uh, and then after that flashback, uh, because Andy, Andy was looking at his scroll uh, inside his coat or under his, under his feathers or whatever, uh, we, we had a, he had a quick flashback. It all went, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, and then he, it zooms back to the present as the... <laughs> Trading party comes down the King's Road the last couple of miles to the, the giant gates of Pavis. You uh you show your paperwork and you still have your your stamped gate entry that you paid your fee for, so you show them that you still they're still valid for another few months. So you let into the greater city of Pavis. Thank you very much, Luna Laddies. Yeah, very nice here, you know. <laughs> Pavis is all the way along here, so you'll have to bear with me. What's that scroll you got there, little man? Well, have you shared the scroll, Andy, or are you, are you keeping it hidden? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just keeping it sort of tucked away, just in case I need it. Right, gentlemen, welcome to Pavis. This is, this is Pavis. The, the, the maps are available to buy at the. Uh, at the gift shop at the gate coming in. Um, so for a couple of lunars, you can buy yourself a, a map of Pavis. Sure. Yeah, I'll I've got myself a map. I'm not buying a map. Yeah. I'll just steal Davies. <laughs> uh, and it looks something like that. They're, they're hand-drawn. Uh, they're not the scale. They're, they're basically for the tourists. But now we at least have a rough idea of what Pavis looks like. The walls of Pavis were built from, there was a giant living statue, like the size of a mountain, that fought with a god here uh, and was thrown down. And then the dwarves came along, chopped his body up and turned it into the walls of Pavis. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Bloodthirst. Don't believe that. Like the same dwarves, but... Sure. Yeah, that seems very far fetched. Yeah, oh. that, that that could never have happened. <laughs> we have to up a lane for some flashback. That part of to the south of the main wall is the uh, main entrance to the big rubble, which is great fun. Oh. I'm sure. Sure, you won't end up in there. Oh, I fucking love that place. Well, you, you've got you've got some paid leave, and you're literally right next door. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, now is the time where I find out what you want to do because this is all on you. 
Well, what we should do is reconnect with our contacts and then possibly find out the find the people who were trying to murder Bracy. Which should be easy because event essentially, as soon as they find out we're here, they're gonna try and kill Bracy. Right, let's yep. act like tourists and make ourselves very known. So you put the, the, the bright Hawaiian shirts on. Yeah. Nah. Get myself sunburned. Get drunk. Stay too much. <laughs> Get the itch. Right. Mm. So you, you've come in through the main gate of Pavis. Uh, I guess you need somewhere to, to steer. Will I know where my cousin is staying or roughly where he is? I will ask you to make me a roll, and I'm not sure what kind of roll, but let me just get a any character sheet that will do. Big boy in roll. He, does he have a big boy, boy roll? skill? Big boy roll. I'm just chatting. Roll your big boy, your big boy skill. <coughs> boy skill, yeah. Uh, what the hell is that? Could it be like an int times three or something? I don't know. Being smart. Intrigue is a streetwise skill. You could possibly use that. Uh, oh, God. Homeland law, you could get away with, maybe. I have a plan, if this doesn't work, but I will try to use my intrigue skill to work out where, other than the Orlanthi Temple, we can connect with our resistance contacts. And since that Just... didn't work... You want the exact opposite of what you need to roll. Could we not just go to the place we saw him last? Why is everybody going to get terrible intrigue? Because we're <clears> spy. <throat> we, we really need to work on our um, interpersonal skills here. <laughs> My intrigue still has a point on the end of it. Right. I've got 11, okay. I I am trying to. <laughs> you might be like, I have a sword, but it's personal. What are you on about? Pretty much. Right, well, first of all, there are several fam famous pubs that are known where adventurers steer. There is Cheating. Rowdy Joe Laws, which is like a real rough end of town uh, over at Riverside. There are Loud Lenina's. Which is all twenty nine apparently. Uh, give me another intrigue roll there, people, or a homeworld law, homeland law, homeworld. I made intrigue. Hurrah! Mm -hmm. I could ask the guards if they know where to bump into the resistance, but that's probably not the smartest idea this week. This, they would say, yeah, that's no problem. There's plenty of them in the jail. I'll introduce you. Right, oh, thank you very much. That's very nice. Clunk as I, Earl's I, hit I, over the head. No, now we know how to do a jailbreak. <laughs> uh, Gimpy's Tavern is the main adventure in Tavern. Gimpy's it so, is. For people staying, there are other lesser ones in basically in every district, right? People you know in Paris, you know, um, the lad who uh, on the caravan, uh, who you sent packing because he was trying to sell you a gem, he was traveling to Paris. Fafford and the Grey Mouse were heading to Paris, that was the last time you saw them. You got Bracey's cousin, Shoshav. Uh, sure, she have the sleek. And that is, uh, obviously, you've got your temples, if you think that would help. Brace has got uh, his thieves club contact. I think we should go to Gimpy's, get some rooms, see if we can find Fafford and the Grey Mauser, and then 
Briz, you can start having a rake around for Shoshan while we chill out. And then once we've found Shoshan, we'll find the Assassin's Guild, chat to them, call them off, and then we can have a proper holiday. See the sights, you know, get some get some ice cream or whatever it's called. Well, the Assassin's Guild. The Assassin's Guild is the Black Fang Brotherhood, which uh, nobody expects the Black Fang Brotherhood, not even the Inquisition. Uh, so they officially don't have a kind of a way to contact them. But they're not generally known that if you want somebody captured and, and dragged off to call, call the Black Fang, it's generally if you want somebody stabbed or poisoned. So were these guys Black Fang that we killed? They weren't, were they? No, because they were trying to take them alive. Right. Did we have any? I can't remember. Did we have any? Because that was the session. I don't think I was there. Because I missed the start. I just turned up for the mangling someone's for the For the mangling part. Yeah, yeah, the mangling. Do you know what I miss? I miss hyperlinked PDFs now because I'm trying to. Right, give me Tavern. Founded five years before the London invasion when three adventurers came out of the rubble. Each had lost part of a leg. But all, they were all rich. So they gave up the life of adventure and formed a tavern. Behind the bar is a very large picture of a naked woman in a repose because I'm looking at the picture now. <laughs> Gimpies is on Salt Street, uh, yeah. just in case you're interested. That's like 042 or something. It will have the actual address here somewhere. It's here. But it's on Salt Street. To the left of the, the temple. Uh, I do remember it being next to a wall. Like yes, it's the, really, the it's next to a wall that leads into the big rubble, apparently. Let's look at that. Gimpies. So you're heading to Gimpies first? Yeah. We'll, set, we'll get rooms at Gimpies and set up at Gimpies. Okay, um, you, you pass through the streets of Pavis. It's a, a vast cosmopolitan city. You've arrived early morning. The gates for the trade caravans. The the guy leading the trade caravan says, uh, right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pull off in the, uh, to the market uh, if you need us. Obviously, you know where to find us. All right, yourself. See you later, mate. Also, you... Uh, know that the Duke has a townhouse here somewhere, but it's not in the posh bit for whatever reason. But he's got one of those, you know, Roman houses with all <coughs> a Sykes. No, wait, a villa. Yes, a villa. <laughs> well, if we get in trouble, that's where our uh, meetup place is. So we'll find out where his kip is, and that's our emergency uh, RV. Yeah, I did have the Duke's house marked as well. There's just so much to learn about Pavis. So, right, I'm at game piece. <sighs> right, in we get. Right, the entrance is in the wall facing Salt Street. Opposite entrance is the east wall of the tavern, which is built up against the Great Wall between the entrance wall and Salt Street is a courtyard, which it will be reached only by going through a gimmies or a crime and over the Salt Street wall. It has an open courtyard uh, and then an awning over the door. There's an open like fire pit on the outside. Obviously, with the awning thing, it must be like the several adventures stand outside smoking pipes. Uh, it opens into the common room. Right. And you enter. Uh, behind the bar, you see the the f famous large picture stretching the full third of the length of the bar of a, a naked woman in the traditional repose of, like, a hand behind her head. Uh, and the place is uh, raw... Like roaring with laughter, there's people there drinking even at the earliest hours of the day. It's filled with smoke. It's 
as close to an adventure in tavern as you can get in RuneQuest. I'll turn around my nana and go, just like home. She walks in. Um, there's one of the gentlemen behind the bar, because there's one at most times of the day for the thing. And she goes, oh, yeah, winks. Right. And she goes, all right, Gimpy. And he, like, winks back. And he goes, all right there. And you're, you're like, look at that. And you're like, what? Gimpy's tavern. She's like, well, I, I, in my younger days, I, I travel quite a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> I look at her and just smile. We're going to get in so much trouble bringing her here. Right. <clears throat> uh, it's a tavern or an inn. Does it have rooms? It does have rooms, yes. I'll go to the bar. It has a large cellar and a uh, guard room underneath, uh, a kitchen and a large common room upstairs. This is one of the things I meant to draw but never got around to. And it has several rooms on the top floor. You got any rooms spare? Uh, we've always got rooms spare, he says. I'll put my arm round me nana, since we're talking to the guy she winked at, and go, we'd like rooms. So he's, he's standing there behind the bar, polishing the, the pot. This is the guy who lost his leg at his knees, peg leg. Um, he says... We've always got uh, we've always got rooms for a friend of you, and uh, he winks at her again. That would be grandson, but keep going. Uh, she says, "Have you got the the good room that overlooks the courtyard again?" He says, "Yeah, actually, we have. So you can have that. That's no problem at all." Well, I'll pile in there then. Thank you very much. How much money does it cost? It's about five learners a day. Okay, I'll give him... I will check that, but uh, for instance, I'll make sure and we'll, we'll sort it out. I'll pay, for the ro- I'll pay for four days on the room, but I will then spend 20 minutes in the room getting uh, it written down in our expenses book. Right, so you get um, McLovin... Remember, he's the, he's the literate one. Yep. To fill the expenses for me. That many lunars, right, a room. Put it in the book. All right. He pulls out this really dog-eared looking thing. I mean, it went in the water with him. So some of the inks kind of run. The pages are curling up in the corners. You know what I mean? Uh, he definitely pulls out a, a quill and some ink licks the end of the quill, crosses his eyes, and starts trying to write in the book. Well, you see, <laughs> because I, I've i seen this, right? If it's in a book, you get your money back. That's that's what the Aceris say. That's how it works. It is. So we just put it in the book and we'll get it back. We'll just give it the bill. You know, right, so you get your room and board sorted, you get your food sorted. Uh, do you have a, a plan of who you want to speak to first? Uh, Bracey, mm-hmm. do you have any uh plans who you want to talk to first? Um, do I think? If my cousin will know anything about, about these guys, or is he, if, if he's just here, like working and visiting, um, is it better off going to the uh, thieves guild? I wonder. Um, let's see if I can find my cousin first. Right. So Bruce, he suggests he tries. He tries to find. Sure, Shav. Um, before we uh, lead off on this, this is probably a good point for me to step out. Right, Once yeah, no problem. Time, just no cause, problem. Yeah. Thanks, man. No worries, son, babe. Enjoy. Yeah. You guys have fun. You got the room. <laughs> enjoy I'll enjoy your Valentine's, dear. Thank you. Wah, 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 wah. 
Right. So, uh, so Brucey says, right, well, I'll try and contact Cousin Shoshaw first. Uh, Andy, do you have a plan of anybody you want to contact or look up or? Not especially. I'm, I mean, are there any ducks in partners? Uh, there are. There's basically some of everything, but like duck population, as it were, you would estimate that there would likely to be on Riverside. Um, not not to be racist or anything, but they would tend to hang out around the water. That's where they can get the best jobs, is because obviously they're like ten times the fishermen and like normal people. Right. No, for the moment, I am going to. Uh, I'm I'm going to put me little webbed feet up and have a rest. I'm on me holidays. <laughs> I'm going to tie knots in me hunky and stick it on top of me head. You know, put me feet up. <laughs> Love it. Um, Oakley Dougley. So that uh, leaves Davy uh, Shashelian. Do you have do you have any uh, current plans or specific plans that you you think you would like to? No, into the mix. Mix. Well, I haven't been to Pavis with the party before, so I'll just um, it's good go here. with the mood. Yeah, it's like uh, it's full of uh, adventuring types. And uh, uh, it's basically one of the most popular places. So I just printed myself a map out. Did you see that we found a mask or something on one of these guys, Rich? Um, they tried to kidnap me or something. Yes, you'd found a, a, a leather mask uh, which had. Uh, like scores in it that looked that made it look a bit like a a mouse mask that you would wear at a ball. Um, That's right. And one of them were ca- was carrying that mask. You found out that it come from Pavis, uh, and there was a hit out on you too. That's the bloke we put through the mangle, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I thought it was. Right, so first of all, can you give me an entry? I doubt it. <laughs> I'll try. Oh! <laughs> Michelle. I'll, I'll, when we I will just sit quietly while they're doing all their thing and Keep an eye on people. See, look at look at if anyone is watching wow. us. We're intriguing. This. What was that, Div? Uh, sorry, all. I'm going to sit around in the bar while they're off intriguing, and see if anyone is specifically keeping an eye on us. Um, right. Well, first of all, I'm just going to give you some rumours for those that passed the intrigue wall. I assume you go down in the bar, uh, or are you sitting in the room? Are, oh no, we'll go down the bar because the, the food's in the bar. Yeah, the food's in the bar. Um, right, right. There, there was actually two. There's two rooms that are free. Well, uh, each has their own chamber pot as well. Oh hell! Yeah, but isn't it weird having two rooms? We'll just all sleep in one room. That's natural. That Can't is the... people with separate rooms. I mean, that's kind of lunar, guys. Just saying. Well, what we should do is we should all sleep in one room and have the other room as a sitting room. Oh, no, because then you just... That's just that's weird. No, uh, uh, this sort of hedonism I can't take. OK, so first up we have... McLovin's Intrigue World. Right, you're sitting around the bar, you overhear a guy. Uh, he says, uh, Wolfhead and Griselda raided Ballastor's barracks and escaped with a great treasure. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Wolfhead... Wolfhead's got Ballastor's axe. He has to have. 
why else would they have disappeared? Nobody's seen them for weeks. The other guy goes, the other guy's like slipping in his cuffs. He's like, you're talking shite, man. You're talking shite. If Wolf had had Ballastor's axe, he'd come in here, he'd be chopping loons up left, right and centre. Do we know anything about what this axe supposedly is? You can make a world law rule. Whoa. A homeland law rule, whatever. Well, I treat that as Glorantha law. Because otherwise, how would you know all this crap? Yep. I mean, I barely, I barely know all this crap. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I've never heard of it, says Cronin. Not a clue. Um, Who's Bollock Stone? McLovin succeeded. Uh, Ballastor's axe is a famous, uh, like, uh, rune level weapon. Uh, Ballastor was one of the heroes of Pavis. Apparently, his barracks are somewhere lost in the big rubble, and his famous, massively powerful magical axe is there. Like, it's one of those weapons that when people tell stories of Ku Cullen where he used to go and chop the tops off mountains, it's that kind of power. Mm. And that was that was Shashelian's role, wasn't it? Or was that? I think that was that was uh, McLovin's. Yeah, yeah. I because are you sharing this info? Unless you share this, the other story. You know how I let them know quietly. I figure we just all sit around in the pub, gassing. Yeah, Shash, you over here. Uh, two guys. They've got their their, their clothes pulled in tight and they're leaning forward conspiratorially. Uh, and one of them says, uh, if you've got any information on the Duke Rouse's townhouse, there's a guy in the Black Fangs paying big money for it. Really? <laughs> Pring! Uh, Earl's, Earl's money, money pricks up when Dave tells you this. So uh, are, you, are you sharing this, Dave? Oh, I, yeah. Uh, somebody in the Black Fang apparently is looking for, looking for info on the Duke's house. Hmm. Might want to tell the gaffer when we get home about that. Like, who's he upset in the black fang? That's what I want to know, eh? Mm. I mean, he is a disgraced lunar, so, you know. Exactly. So, basically, the lunars want to kill him, the rebels want to kill him, and all the locals want to kill him. So, basically, he's our typical type of friend. Yes. Everybody hates him but us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, just imagine what uproar it's going to cause when he releases all the bondsmen and, and gives them land to farm. Because obviously, then he'll have a bunch of farmers and then they'll have to pay him a tithe of their crops. Do you know what I mean? It's like, he's not a dumb blow. No, it's going <clears> to <throat> cause just a little bit of trouble. Especially, the, will the Lunas be happy at the whole releasing slaves business? Probably they're not. not. Big on that. No. They're not big on releasing slaves. Not when they've got a hungry bat to feed. Yeah. Um, right, so that is what you overhear, just mincing about the tavern. Uh, Bracey says, right, well, the first thing I should do is try and try and find Shoshav, uh, his cousin. Um, uh, uh, and Andy seems to be uh, uh, Rualan's, like, not taking this seriously. He comes down to the bar, he's got a knotted handkerchief on his on his head, uh, <laughs> orders a beer. You notice that this is a, a massive multicultural bar. There's all sorts of uh, people coming in. Uh, there's trolls drinking in the corner. Um, they, they have a, a especially big door, so you can get things like minotaurs and centaurs in. It's like a, a full multicultural pub. You reckon you'll meet just about anybody in Gimpies at one point or another? Um, I will keep an eye out for anyone keeping an eye on us. Right, okay. Um, you can make me uh, another intrigue roll, then I guess. No, him or all of us? Anybody that wants to do that? Because you, you're basically sitting down discussing plans and, and things like that. Can I slowly, like, you know, sit back and look around the room and you sense to see if people are trying to avoid my gate? You know what I mean? You know, if I look up at people, look, people trying not for us to notice them and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Give us a, um, 
Give us a scan roll. Fucking hell, man. Actually, I tell you what you can all do. It's on your character sheet. If you go to your reputation tab, there's a little room next to reputation. You can all give us a reputation roll. And let's see if anybody gets recognised. Ah, oh, no. Reputation doesn't go up like skills, by the way, so you don't tick it or anything. Right, Rim. Right, where do I find it? Next to your name and stuff, right up the top. Yeah, main reputation. If you click the first little room that's next to it. Uh, ah, right. Yes, yes. <whistles> Hang on. Right, Cain refuses to have anything to do uh, with this after a long journey, and he says he's staying in the room. Right. Right, so so nobody pays you any any much of attention. <clears throat> um, right. So, do you want to... Ask any questions to the barman, to the parents. Do you want to look places? Um, Bracey's... W- oh, sorry, go on. Uh, Bracey, your mm-hmm. cousin Shoshav, what god would he worship? Because it's traditional, if you're looking for people, <coughs> um, because of the, the prominence of religion, that you'd normally leave a message at the temple because most people are calling at least once a week for a quick prayer because it never hurts to get on the good side of God, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, yeah. oh, I He's probably a trickster as well. <sighs> if he's keeping it in the family, so to speak. Um, right, so they the, the don't really have any shrines to tricksters because they're like, uh, obviously shunned because they're a pack of bastards. Um, <coughs> They're literally, you know, the agent of chaos, as it were. Um, so you probably there'll be a, a secret shrine at the Orlanti Temple, and you could probably leave a message there uh, yeah. by slipping a few uh, silver coins mm-hmm. uh, to say that to leave a message, basically. And that's that's how generally you'll contact people uh-huh. if you can think I, you're in town. Can I remember what he was actually here for? <laughs> He's basically just this flashy bloke that goes around uh, and gets all the girls, does all the cool missions, uh, gets into cart chases, uh, mm-hmm. like drives chariot chases down streets, uh, you know, the type. Right. Is there, it, is there like a adventurer's guild type thing, you know, where you can go out and sign up to do missions and stuff like that? Uh, the closest is the Humanity Temple. The Humanity Temple has a mercenary board in Hiram Hall. I think it's worth taking a wander down there, huh? Could be. I just want to have a quick ask at the bar about something. Okay. But I'll go over at the bar and go, um, what's the guy, what's your brother's name again? What's your cousin's name again? Um, yeah, yeah I switch. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, Shav the Sleek. I sure shall have the Sleek been in today. Um, I think that is unlikely, so let's see. Exceptional, no. Right, no. Um, he, he seems to have heard of Shushav. He says, uh, no, the flash gift. He says, I haven't seen him for about four and a half weeks, five weeks. Uh, you got two reasonably new guys. Probably you've been in here like a bit of a season. Um, big bloke. little And a little bloke. Little bloke's proper flashy. Big bloke's dangerous. Play a lot of gambling games. Win quite a lot. Fafford and the Grey Mouser. He's seen them around. I because it would have been uh somewhat likely yes. Um he says uh yeah um well they called the near for a pint. Apparently uh they went round all the drinking establishments and uh took took two jugs of wine from every one. That's the the rumor on the street, and they literally did a pub crawl around the hall of Paris in one night. Um yep. uh apparently even Snake Fang's boys uh, avoided them because uh, somebody tried to take on the newcomers in one of the dark alleys, uh, and what they found left of them was dumped in the river. So, <laughs> and you've seen anything of them since? Um, 
Not really. Uh, make me a look, Rollo. Uh, oh, times five. So, Andy, you you could probably you you well you could go to, certainly go to the humanity temple anyway because like you go for a quick prayer as it were. Um, he yes. says there. He says, I think they're actually staying over at um, Loud Ladinas, which Thanks. is 029. Uh, you mean across the road? It's a bit a bit of a rougher place than this, but like I said, um, right, that is Loud Ladinas. Mm-hmm. Right. Thanks very much, Barman. Me, should, right, do we want to stick together or do we want to split up? Because me, me, Ganny, the boy and the monkey can go to uh, Loud Ladinas and you and Andy can have a wander up to the Humax Hiring Hall and then you can have a wander to the Thieves Guild and he can watch your back because you shouldn't be alone because there's someone here in the city who wants to murder you. <laughs> I, th- I thought you were going to send them out as bait, and then everybody like that's the next plan. You know the way you follow a kid to skill the first few times you send, them yeah, by themselves. Mm-hmm. You're just like, Gracie, go to the opposite side of the city and pick up a jug of wine for us. And he's like, Why? Like, no reason. And then <laughs> well, you're like, Follow behind him, Scooby Doo stuff. Funny you should say that, but I literally was thinking of staking him out like a goat. Uh, Nan <laughs> says, Nan says, Well, while we're here, I'd like to go and have a Famous burger in Bob's Bison Burgers, which is here. Oh, we'll put uh, Bob's first, and then we'll have on Rhino Alley. Then we'll go through Sword Street and to uh, Le- Lucky Ladinas. So we'll go- let's all go to Bob. Uh, let's go to Bob's Bison Burgers and have a, a Bison Burger first. Okay, okay. Right off to the Bison. Andy, Andy, are you going to allow them to drag you out under protest? Well, oh, well, all right. I mean, you know, if it's. If it's new restaurants and interesting it's holiday food, I restaurant, yet. it's holiday. I am, restaurant. I am only holidays. It's tapas, mate. It's tapas. Oh, top your own ass. <laughs> um. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, look. Bob's bison burgers. It is. Right. So you head off uh, down Salt Street. Um. As you approach, uh, the the corner of Salt Street and Rhino Alley, um, there is uh, the strong smell, uh, firstly of blood, and secondly of uh, delicious cooked meat. And as you round the corner, you see that uh, Bob's Bison Burgers, there's like the restaurant side on the left, uh, and then it's like a backyard, but the wall's not high enough. Like you can see over the wall. Like it's deliberately being built, so it's like a tourist attraction. There's this enormous meat grinder with like this rope and pulley system. Uh, and just as you come around the corner, uh, Bob, who's a, a, a small, uh, uh, weedy looking bloke with black hair and a black mustache, uh, is lowering an entire bison at this meat grinder. There's quite a crowd gathered around it because it's apparently one of the famous sites of Pavis. So as this, this bison is lowered, it, it, the meat grinder grinds the entire thing up. Bones, hooves, everything just grinds it all up into one like giant paste that comes out the bottom. Then then as as it disappears in the crowd goes, yes. It's like if they had like if they had cameras, they'd be taking selfies. I will turn round at this point. I will watch this and I will turn and look straight at braces and our eyes will meet. Because he's thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> Salmonella. New mangle found. Yep. You can break into Bob's bicycle box and use it as mangle as a torture device. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Never noticed the difference. This is my favourite place in the Hall of Pavis. So you, you go into the restaurant at the side, uh, booths, all the way along the left-hand side, and then there's a counter on the right-hand side. There's a little chalkboard that says Burger of the Deer. How? It's got, uh, it's got in squiggles. Uh, and it's got it's got squiggles on it, on the on the chalkboard. I'll stare at the squiggles. Bracey looks at the squiggles, right, and then, like, with his finger, like a small child, points at the first letter and goes, 
bur- bur- burger o- of the the d- 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 deer. I'll clap. Right. Everybody stops and looks at you, Brissy, as they're stunned by the fact that you can read. You've got like <laughs> some kind of weird witch magic on you. <laughs> not natural. Do you have do you have visible trickster tattoos or not? I know you've got the visible beast ones. Um No. You keep them hidden. Yes. Probably for the best. You don't want to be like tarred and feathered all the time, do you? No. <laughs> Bob comes over to you. Uh, his wife's behind the behind the uh, counter as well. Running about, you th- see three small children. One one boy and two girls. The the youngest girl has a, a, a hat made out of uh, an antelope, and it actually has the antelope. No. And he says, uh, uh, welcome, welcome to Bob's Bison Burger, sir. What can I get? Would you like a, a burger of the deer? Yes, one each, please. And do you have a merry meal for a child? A merry child's meal. Uh, it, it comes what, with a, a small bite, a small commemorative bison toy. Two, please. One for the, the baboon. Right, so so uh, you're shown to a booth um, by uh, the the young, uh, slightly chubby boy. And he's like, "Hello, welcome to Bob's. Can I take you to a booth, please?" And then looks up and goes, "See, Dad, I did it." Uh, okay, we'll go to a booth. Uh, and he sits you down and he goes, "Would you like any condiments? We have salt." Yes. But it's only a little bit because uh, it's quite expensive. Like a pinch each. Yeah, it's like a pinch. Yeah, one box burger, all the special sauce. Right, so this great big burger comes out. Um, they're quite expensive. They're, they're like, um, what do you call them? Uh, thingy burgers. Uh, the homemade burgers. So. They're about uh, five lunas each, which is ridiculously oh, expensive. Jeez. But it, it's like a, a famous tourist attraction. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll pay for everyone's burgers. This is how you can get salt and a toy. Yeah. We're coming back here every day until we're poor. <laughs> Does it taste like an animal? It tastes much like a, if you, It tastes like exactly what it tastes like if you got an entire bison and ground the whole thing up uh, in a giant mincing machine uh, and then fried it on a on a hot grill with cheese mm. there's it's crunchy very, things it's very tasty Ganny, there's crunchy stuff in here she goes the grizzly bits are the best bits man get it down oh, your neck a certain, <laughs> a certain thing that's green that smells of vinegar what is this <laughs> he says she says that's called dressing. Oh. Okay. I'll wolf it down. I'll turn around to Alan and say, make friends. All right. Uh, Alan uh, starts talking to the, the, the three kids uh, at Bob's. And as per usual, it, it, for whatever reason, he seems to, to just make friends with everybody. People that don't know him sort of like pat him on the head as almost as if they're unconsciously doing it uh, as he's wandering about. He finishes his his burger meal and uh, finishes his burger meal and then goes off and plays with the kids at the back. I'll While not... writing, I'm going to have a scan around to make sure anybody's watching us. I'll have Bourbon go and play with them as well because Bourbon's his uh, monkey guard. Yes. Because B- Bourbon's grown at quite a, quite an alarming rate, and it's like uh, if anybody attacked him, he could like pull their arms out with his monkey strength. Yeah. <laughs> Eat their faces. But Andy, this burger is like almost as wide as your head. I mean, they are expensive, but they're uh, big. Artisan. They're, That's artisan. what you're looking for. It's an artisan Art- burger. No, yes. Artisanal burger. Yes, it's Pavis's first artisanal burger burger joint. It's like, and he's like, mm, artisan. Is that foreign for 
fucking huge. So are you partaking in this ground up bison burger, Andy? Of course I am. I'm not letting one of the great sites of Pavis go to waste. Exactly. <laughs> it's if only if only they'd invented the selfie. <laughs> What I could need... do a tattoo of it. Uh, what we need is a cartoonist. Yeah. Somebody oh. with, with, with a bit of vellum and a, and a piece of charcoal out would do a very quick sketch. Jimmy! 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 What? Make your character able to draw. And then you can, like, do a travel log. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Uh, Bl- Blondel's travel log of... Uh, yeah, Grand we should Bell. do this. Well, actually, I was thinking in real life, learning to draw manga and doing a manga comic based on our adventures. <laughs> that would also be awesomely cool. Th- this would be acceptable. This could not go wrong in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> you brought, so let me get this right. You wrote a comic of you lot being in the secret resistance with all the names and everything you've done in it. Yeah. And then you sold it. Yeah. In Pavis. Yeah. We made lots of it. Well, um, I was thinking in real life. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. You could also do that. You could also do that, yes. <laughs> this, this would also be acceptable. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, enjoy these burgers. They're, they're thoroughly tasty. They're expensive and artisanal, but they're thoroughly tasty. Is there anything else you need to do here, or were you just seeing the sights of Pavis? Just seeing the sights. Just seeing the sights, and I we'll want have a quick a scan to see if anybody looks like they're watching us. Yeah, I'm always keeping an eye on our back uh, back passage, our back trail. <laughs> I'll I, I have you know you can stop looking at my back. Yeah. I think I need to loosen my trousers before I look at the sights of Pavis. You <laughs> think you do? Good God. Good God, I have one. never had a burger before, but they're really nice. Oh, give it about six hours so it'll be that last scene from Blazing Saddles. We'll all be in the room. We'll all just sit and go, Right, uh, through down so let's head down right, so uh, There's an insight as well. Give us an insight Ooh. check. I didn't know there nope. was an insight. Why not? We might as well use all the skills. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to use every. I'm trying to use every interpersonal skill. Inside, I'm on. not that good. Where do I find it? Oh, come here, you bloody thing! Yes. Hey. Yay. Right. Um. Uh, what I'm going, what I need to do is, uh, who's got the highest reputation? Mine's eighteen. Uh, Mine's fourteen, so not me. Definitely not me. That's right. So what I'm going to do is write down eighteen. Right. Uh, there's nobody watching you or looking at you in way, and. Uh, actually, due to your insight, you notice that the, the other three trying to look uh, surreptitious are actually like spinning around and staring at people and not being insightful at all. <laughs> uh, but nobody, luckily, this is a crazy metropolitan town and nobody seems to be taking any notice of them. That's good. Right, let's head to the other pub and see if we can see Faffer the Grey Mouser and then we'll go and do some other stuff. So, you head over to Loud Lalina's. Yeah, down Sword Street. Up Salt Street, right, down Sword Street. Yeah, you're holding your, like, badly badly drawn and printed sort of tourist map. And people are looking at it as if to go, oh, newbies. <laughs> I wish, right, that the, the index in the PDF was clickable, so I just click Loud Lalinas. Yeah, it would take you straight there. It would make so much sense. It's 
So you had you had the loud Lalinas. This is a much more a much more rougher pub, but it also seems to be a lot more fun. The difference between the borough and the blood. Yes, basically. Yeah. Uh, outside of Loud Lalinas, um, apparently the locals called it the Golden Bosom, as the the pub sign that's hanging outside is sort of a shot of yeah, you know, a milkmaid, but like just that chest, <laughs> uh, painted in gold. Uh, uh, there's a caller outside, and I actually have wrote down. Which page I want to be on for this one? Because I'm kind of good sometimes. This is the cat party might need to go. Might want to go. Loud Lalinas. That was my guess. Right, there's a caller outside shouting. Tonight only the chanty men are singing sea shanties at Loud Lalinas. Oh no. As he's gone past, he's gone. Come back tonight. Have a drink. Come and see the ch- the famous chanty men, sing the the singers of Pavis. It's going to be quite the orky again, isn't it? <laughs> if you'd like to give us a homeland knowledge roll, or you could ask the guy, I suppose, if it's up here. I'll I'll think to see if I know first, and then I'll ask if I don't. I don't. What's that in? All right, shouty lad. What's that like? He says, uh, special on the night, the, uh, the, the famous chanty men from Pabas, they're, uh, they're doing a one night only concert at Loud Lalinas. What are they famous for? Uh, being a, a, an all a cappella sea shanty singing group, uh, says Andy, who, who succeeds in his role. I've never met an a cappella before. And it didn't even are they like the Agamori? Big blokes. Is that like the Agamori then? Big the, blokes. The chanty men, three singers, two male, one female, a river folk, and have a large repertoire of boat songs. All oh, right. So Sounds interesting. Yeah. Tonight only they're, they're singing at Loud Lalinas. Shouty bloke. You haven't seen Fafford and the Grey Mouser about, have you? I would say that's probably very likely, to be fair. Big bloke and a little bloke. Exceptional, yes. He says, uh, aye, he says, they're in the bar now. He says, they're bloody insatiable. They, they drink all hours of the day and night. They go whoring. They're, they're, they're always up for a fight. Aye, family. I'll slap them on the back. Thank you, Butchley. Come on, lads. Last Nana, son, monkey. Are you taking Nana with you everywhere? Yeah. Loud Lelena's. Yeah, like, Loud Lalinas is like a t- one of those typical fantasy bars where it's loud and raucous. Uh, like the bouncer, as you go in, the bouncer throws a guy out, even though it's like, you know, about mid deer. Um, uh, We're great yeah. dogs. We literally exist to live in a pub. This is quiet. As you go past, the bouncer's like broad and squat, and he's got a scar above one eye and like a permanently broken nose and things. And he goes, all right, Nan. And she goes, all right, love. Gives him a wink as she goes in. You again, turn and look at that. <laughs> I love your Nana. <laughs> I must sit down with your Nana and buy her enough booze so she'll tell us our latest story. We Kurt. don't have enough money. <laughs> there's not enough alcohol in Pavis for that. I'm wandering and look around to see Faf and the Grey Mouser at the bar. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, actually, they're, they're sitting at sitting at a table at the back. There's like empty wine jugs uh, with the corks knocked off lying all over the table. Uh, f- and f- uh, the mouse is sitting back with his feet up on the table and Fafford is, is joining in with the singing, waving his, waving his half-empty jug of wine about. I will go to the bar and buy four big... Cask uh, jars of wine, hand three of them, one to Nana, two to Bracey. I'll get one. I'll walk. I'll sl- walk slightly over, so I'm within arm's length of them, and I'll throw 
without warning, the jug towards the Grey Mauser. The full one. Right, okay, give us a throw and roll then. Uh, I know you've got throw, it's a manipulation skill or an agility skill, something like that. A throw. I did, I did Whoops. skills. Close. Uh, yeah, it's close. It, um, it whizzes across the table. Uh, it looks like it's going to miss uh, and head straight over the table and smash off the wall. But the last second, Mouser like shoots forward, uh, it cuts Clory's dagger, like lashes out, and it's the, the catches the jug handle in midair. The jug sort of swings round and round and round the dagger for a few seconds, and then he pulls it back. And he gives you a broad grin. He says, "All right, Crowdan." Sorry, like, that's... leaps up and he's like, "Ah, oh, McLovin!" <laughs> grabs you in an enormous bear hug, like lifts you off your feet without any sort of effort. <laughs> you know, Fafford. He says, uh, "I forgive you for my balls, McLovin." He, 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 we, you know what? We've come all the way here because he wanted a hug. Fafford Grey Mouser, that you know everyone here. Uh, that's my nana. It's like, I'm sure we've met. And she goes, maybe, love. And gives him another one of our little nana winks. <laughs> Because, because I'm not sure about the face, but the body is definitely familiar. Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh God. <laughs> uh, you lads busy? He says, uh, uh, no, actually, um, we were just about, do we think they're going into the big rubble, to be honest? We're running a little low on coin, he says, as like the whole t- as you look at the table covered in jugs of wine. Um, and we, well, I just got a, a, an urge. I need, I need to stretch my legs and my arms. I need to get, I need to get into the rubble and do some fighting. Well, uh, you wouldn't fancy. You're not in the fear of a game at the moment, are you? Because we might need some backup. Because I think we're about to upset the entire Assassins Guild. Let's see. So you, you're just talking about the Black Fang openly? No, no, not the Black Fang. These other guys they, they with a mouse mask. Oh, right. He, he, he leans in conspiratorially. Uh, he says, you're talking about the Black Fang? The assassins? No, not them bastards. God, no, I'd be the other side of the bloody world if they were after her. Some other guys who reckon they're the best assassins in Paris. <laughs> Uh, uh, and who would they be then? I don't know. Uh, we stuck this guy's bollocks in a mangle. Uh, I'll, can I remember what he said? He uh, just, he just uh, yes, I am me bollocks mostly. <laughs> You've still got the mouse mask, and he, he just said that there was a, there was a hit out on McLovin, but he was to be taken back alive. Hey, someone's got a hit on McLovin. Uh, and then want them alive, probably to bugger them, right? And, and Fafford goes, that's probably because he did somebody else's ball. Ah! Roars with laughter. Obviously, he's probably three quarters drunk. He's always three quarters drunk. Uh, so, like, uh, I'm trying to find out who whose little group of feckers this mask comes from. And when we find them, I've got a bad feeling it might kick off. And I was wondering, you know, if we ran in this direction, if we could get a little bit of backup and would let you shake down what was in their pockets, buy you plenty of wine. He said, he says, mask. Have you showed him the mask? Yeah, I'll show him the mask. I'll give it a 50 50 chance idea what that's about. Yes. Oh, right. Okay. He says, um, I mean, we've only been in Pavis a few months, but, you know, we get around. He says, that looks like it belongs to one of the rats' henchmen. The rats, some big little crime boss. We haven't any deals with him, dealings with him, but apparently his, uh, his trusted henchmen get to wear, wear that mask on a night. There's a guy called the rat, and his henchmen walk around wearing... Mouse masks. 
Yes, he says when they don't need to be recognised, he's uh, he's obviously took a playbook out of the Penguins henchman. Yeah, that's just what Ooh. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea where we can find him? He says, no, I, I've only heard rumours of him. I've never actually had any de- direct dealings with him. He doesn't doesn't seem to have uh, entered our sphere of influence. Is he any good? He says, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's just rumours I've picked up around here. He says, you keep your ears to the ground in all these taverns. And... Aye, aye. Right. Uh, thanks. We're going to head off and. He says, uh, I, I tell you what, though, there's more than one thieves guild in Pavis. No surprise. If only we knew someone who hadn't in with them, and oh, everyone's going to turn around and look at McGlover. <laughs> Even people who aren't at our table. <laughs> yeah. The whole what? Just goes, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, nobody's turned and looked for you. He says, Well, he says, we're going to hang on a few days, but I, I've got this strange feeling. I, I need to flex my muscles. We need to, we need to head out into, into the big rubble. And, but uh, certainly Crud will help you as, as long as we're here. Well, I mean, you're welcome to come into the rubble with us if it's something it's you, you feel like. But, uh, we'll sort this out first. Um, Rouse and Rowan's got a house in town, hasn't he? Are you asking? Yeah. Are you asking Mouser? Where it is? Unlikely. No, he doesn't know where it is. Uh, I strange enough. This is also my little GM cheat street places players might need to go. Yeah. So I know where it is. <laughs> That's all right. I know how to find it. Right, thank you very much, Mouser lads. Uh, we'll have a few more drinks and then we'll have a wander out. And uh, we're, it's probably a bad idea if we all go to the Thieves Guild, which means we need to leave Bracey on his own, which means he's probably going to get murdered. Well, that probably, I mean, that probably cheer one of you, is it? But, send them I, mean, I mean, tra- traditionally, thieves guilds are not plus one. <laughs> you you want to take people in if you want, but uh, it's humacty. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is my f- two friends. This is a duck humacty, and this is a human humacty who are standing in there, glowering and rubbing their swords and <laughs> looking <laughs> angry. No, uh, I think we've got to be sensible about this and you're going to have to go. But we need a, to find a place for you to meet us if anything goes bad. Why? I mean, just hang around outside while I go in. I don't think you're supposed to take us to the door. Yeah. I don't or think they like, I... have a sign and things. I think. No, all right, well, we'll have a look, see if there's a, a tavern or something. There's and bound to be a tavern across the street. <laughs> yeah, just hang around outside the tavern. Yeah, we'll hang around in the area. Uh, Drinking uh, cocktails and stuff. Where's the Lunas? The Lunas are pretty much everywhere, but oh. m- most of the important ones are at the posh end of town. Is there a guard about? Like a, guard, a Lunar Guard patrol about? Constantly, yes. They'll do. Constable, Constable John Jack has patrols all the place and on a night apparently there's a new Tolkien uh, Tolkien patrol uh, yes uh, the one ring um, <laughs> no, there's a new they've been hiring trolls and Tolkien you did meet Constable Led yes the last time you were in Pavis right I'll wander straight up Boulder's Brass to the nearest uh, full patrol of Luna guards Okay. I will tug my fall up and go, Hello, lads. Uh, I was wondering, uh, do you know where uh, Duke Rouse of Rowan's house is like? He, he, he sort of like sniffs, looks at you like from underneath his helmet. Uh, oh, also, by the way, uh, you, there's a ban on 
plate armor in Pavis, so you can't be wearing any kind of plate if you have it. Also, I... you have to keep your weapons sort of with a piece knot on so that they can't be drawn. Right, so I've got a piece knot on my spear. Yeah. Which is, is a ball, basically, around my spear. Yes. Like, made out of ribbon. We wouldn't do so that. You have, you have yeah. a big cork on it, man. Yeah, you've got a yeah. big cork on the end of your spear. <laughs> Rune magic is is forbidden inside. We, you found this out last time you were here. Rune magic is forbidden inside of the city, except for like holy rituals. And offensive magic is not to be cast, except in like legal duels or self where defense. where self defense or where lunas are not actually watching you. Yeah, you mean we don't care as long as we don't have to see it. Uh, yeah, Duke Rouseron, the bloke from uh, down the river, tall fella. Right, his wife's pretty. He says, uh, uh, he looks you up and down. And says, I don't think that uh, you're the sort of person that messes uh, about with uh, gentlemen of breeding like that. Excuse me, say, what do you say? <laughs> he says you're common as muck. All right, no, no, we work for him. Like we're on holiday. He says, I very much doubt that. What a bet! I shall step forward quietly and just go. Ahem. <laughs> right. <laughs> The uh, the lunar sort of looks down, then looks down some more, and then bends almost double as he looks down and peers at you. There's some like grumbling noises, and like, hmm, duck. He's got his big lunar like nose there. Yep. Well, I shall go big to nose win and produce my scroll from in among me feathers. <laughs> He sort of like, he takes this scroll and looks at you, and he looks at the Duke of Mark, and then he he goes, hmm, hmm, and appears to be scanning it. So does anybody want to make an insight check? He can't yeah. read, can he? I... You're weird when he wants who can't read. Success. Everyone else can read. The Lunars are proper clever. They tell everyone they're cleverer than everyone, so they've got to be able to read. Where's insight? It's It's run away, Rich. I don't know what perception is it. Oh, I found it. Didn't make it though. Right, so McLovin, he is definitely not. He, he definitely can't read this, but he, he it's got the wax ducal seal at the bottom. Like presumably, Andy, you will being a duck, you'll have a like waterproof storage stuff, like a waterproof bag, like scroll cases, that kind of thing. Whereas yep. normal, like two footed. People are stupid and they don't waterproof all their gear. You you spend as much as your time in the river as out. So, so he goes mm-hmm, and then like pretends to read it. Uh, he's obviously holding it upside down, <coughs> and and then oh. like obviously checks the jewel scroll. And he goes very well. This appears to be in order. Can I use? Can I do a quick fast talk, Robert, and go? And you pay if you pay to the attention to paragraph twenty one B. It says you are to give us every assistance that is possible. If you make this roll, I will kiss you. Well, I've got it's fast got, talk 110. It's yeah. got stupid fast talk. Go on, <laughs> then. Go on, then. Done it. All right. Uh, he looks at the uh, the jutal sail. He looks at you, shabby lot. He hands the, rolls a scroll up, hands it back to And he says, very well, we will uh, we'll lead you there. Thank you very much, mate. I'll smack, I'll pat him on the back. I'll I, make sure uh, the, uh, the uh, governor hears all about this. I look at Andy, you just wink at him. What's your name? <laughs> Sergeant? Or is it, is it General? I, I don't know how you lot work. Um, it's, it's Sergeant Octavius, actually. Ah, Sergeant, Sergeant so, Noctavius, right. Please, please follow me and... Uh, I'll keep in step with him badly. You know uh-huh. when you keep skipping to try to keep in step? We'll uh-huh. all try to keep in step. 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to draw a shape. There is the Duke's house there. In lunar red. Uh -huh. Oh. And, and there's his swimming pool. Oh. So if you want to write on there, Duke's house, I'm just like drawing no, I'm not interesting going to write things. On the map because that ends with penises. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it starts as swimming pools, ends in penises. Thank you very much, lads. It's very kind of you. But I'll make sure the gaffer knows, Mr. No uh, sir, uh, General. Right. Now, if I, if on oh, once they've gone, if the shit hits the fan, we'll come here and we'll kick the door. I assume there's people living here. It must have staff, surely. They'll do. They'll let us in. You've got your piece of paper. I have. Yeah, you know, that... I've... I haven't got a clue what it says, but I've got it. Yeah, that piece of paper uh, uh, is apparently um, like a, a writ to say that he's a, an upstanding citizen and uh, of the Lunar Empire and not to be killed on sight by the Lunars. It's not. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, as long as you, you, as long as it's got the seal on the bottom and people can't read, do you know what I mean? with us who can tell them what it says. <laughs> is it worth seeing if there's anybody actually inside? And letting them know that we might need to come back. Because yes. obviously, if we, if, they, if we get in trouble and we just hoof the door down, they'll go screaming for the guards. Okay. If this is your. And you got the seal. Your rodeo, mate. I'll clap you on the back, knock on the door, then stand behind him. Right. So, you approach it. It's a, a, a rectangular, a large rectangular. Like a, a, one of those Roman style buildings that you may have seen in the Spartacus sort of TV series with a, a stout double gate around the outside. It's surrounded by a sturdy wall. There's a stout double gate to keep out the riffraff. It's big uh, and it's got uh, like bronze nails set into the top to stop the pigeons landing on it. Knock on the door. Right, you breathe stoutly on the door. Boom, boom. Uh, you wait a few minutes, and then you hear a, the shuffling noise of uh, and he shouts, "Bang her off!" Um, we have a bloody order, Eddie. Funny you wait to talk to employees of your master. Yeah, indeed. I'd hate to think what would happen when we tell them how we've been treated. He says, what the bloody hell are you talking about? Is there a little, like, um, you know, head height, flappy bit in the gear that you can open to see who it is? Yes, because that sounds like it's excellent fun. Right, uh, <laughs> Make a fast talk roll, Bracey. This should be quite difficult. If he fumbles a fast talk roll, I swear Special. to God. Special. Right. So this little little flap pulls inwards, and you can see like a, a, a watery, bloodshot uh, grey eye looking through. <laughs> and he says, um, what the fuck are you talking about? There's nobody. There's no deliveries due here. There's been nobody here for months. Andy, give me that uh, letter with the seal on, mate. There you go. I'll pull it up very slowly in front of him, beside my face, so we can see the seal. Right, okay then. I think it's probably extremely unlikely that he, he can read. So let's check. Very unlikely. No, he can't read. Right, so he goes, hmm, ah, hmm, okay, mm hmm, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Tell him what it says, tell him what it says, <laughs> tell him what it and, says. And then he looks at the ducal seal at the bottom and he goes, well, that's bloody genuine. Hang on. So, like, you hear, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk. Uh, uh, oh, my bloody gout. Uh, 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 as all of these uh, all of these bolts are removed 
uh, and the, the left hand door swings open. It's an old, uh, disheveled looking servant. If you can imagine, uh, like grey hair, uh, watery eyes. He's got like the, the red of his nose is red. He smells strongly of drink. <laughs> he says, I suppose you're very well. Bloody come in then. I'll give him that half thing of wine I'm carrying around. I'll just walk in the door and hand him half a uh, bottle, of, half a jug of wine. Oh, he says, most obliged, most obliged, sir. Oh, no worries. Uh, we just popped in to see it. The Duke says, uh, if we get in trouble, we can uh, come here because we're on his business like. He says, um, well, uh, uh, can I just uh, just lock up the, the gate again? And he pushes the gate too. And you, you see there's all these different bars and, and bronze bolts. And he's like, <laughs> and this old fella like struggles and he pushes the bolts in. And he says, please, please come into the house. Uh, and he leads you into the, I think it's got a little water fountain. And you notice that the the, the gardens, the, the grand gardens on the outside, uh, it's starting to look overgrown. They've got weeds in. Um, and he leads you into the house. He says, uh, we, we can't really talk about outside, he says, but I'm the only one left here. I'm the only servant. The Duke's gone off on some damn adventure. He took all the servants and all the guards. Yeah, yeah, we, we're working for him there, where he is. But he says, uh, if they find out there's no bloody guards, somebody will come over the wall and cut me through it in the middle of the night. Oh, funny you should say that. Well, he can crash here tonight if you want. <laughs> What's the chance of this place getting burgled where we're there? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it takes it's, it takes three climb rolls to climb the wall. That's how big the wall is around the outside. He says, "Oh, forgive me, forgive me, lords. Uh, I'm I'm mellowy. Uh, I'm the eldest footman. I'm the only one that's left." Oh, we're not lords. We work for a living. I'll pump his hand and say, "Nice to meet you, Melanie." <laughs> he says, uh, "Can I uh, can I offer you some food? I don't know what's left in the kitchen. It's it's just me now. I just have to cook what's there. Uh, uh, there might be some bread and cheese, although they're both a bit hard to be fair." No, we've mm. just eaten the bison. It's but we just wanted to, you know, let you know we're in town if you need anything, and if we're getting, if we need to meet up, we'll just head back here, you know. Brissy, give us a device check, please. Uh, uh, yes, he says Success. I can. I can make the uh, I can make the beds up. The the master uh, uh, he has the orgy room, obviously. Um, and there's that hasn't been used for a while. And then there's all of the the side bedrooms that come off from the orgy room. Um, uh, and then there's the master bedroom, but I can't give you that because that's the master's room and, and the mistress's room. Says, oh, she's this... alive now. He went. He goes. What? She died. When did she die? No, she didn't die. She was near, she was almost dead, but not all the way dead. No, not, <laughs> not totally dead. He was like, "Oh, the mistress. Oh, she's lovely, the mistress. Uh, I have to clean her toys. It's one of my duties." <laughs> Don't want to know. <clears throat> um, he says, "So I can I can make up the shears lounges in the orgy. Aye, there's some, right. There's some there's some bedrooms." We'll we'll have the orange room. Right, Bracey, mm -hmm. as you're a dirty, filthy trickster and a thief to boot, uh, mm -hmm. you've been casing the joint, uh, like, as a matter of fact. Every time you go into a place, you sort of have a look around. Of course. The, wall, the wall's sturdy. Uh, the only safe entrance to break in would be there's a, an open window on the second floor. Uh, it doesn't... It either had like shutters which have, have come off and haven't been repaired, uh, or it never had them. But that's that's the only open. The roof looks sturdy, so it looks like it'd be very hard to get in there. Uh, the wall is high and difficult to climb. Maybe for normal thieves and stuff, but it might be a lot easier for assassins. But they're probably still going to take the easy. Um, so it would be bloody hard to get in here. Right. But, however, once you get in, there's no guards. Well, yeah. Well, that they don't. 
I will make a mental note and I will tell the lads at an appropriate time what I have noticed. He says, we, we haven't had any trouble, but obviously it's not it's not great knowledge that there's no guard. I, I don't think there's anybody who'd be interested in the place. Well, if we need to come in and crash, we'll come and crash. Uh, I'll leave you the wine and... Uh... I'll bring you some shopping when we come back. Yeah. Has he, I, I, has he got any access? To, you know, I'll ask him if he's got, is he living on like old food or does he, has he got anywhere to get some fresh stuff? He says, uh, no, the, 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 uh, the juice left me a stipend at the temple. I go and get collect me, me week's wages every week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically, uh, the, there's a meeting at the butlers down at one of the pubs mm. once a fortnight. It's it's about the only time I go out for a drink. So When's that next? When you have when you have, I was going to tell you, when you have this meeting, do you hear a lot of rumours and things about what's happening in the city? He says, "I tell you what it is. There's nothing like a servant for passing rumours because we we do love a good gossip. We do. Mm-hmm. Is it worth? Oh, I think it's worth asking them about um, these." Uh, Assassins, not that, yeah. The a guy called Rat. 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 Yeah. Um, he says, well, the the big rumor last the last meeting, which was uh, which was about three days ago, Kroger Wolfhelm has got a hiding place in the rubble from whence he raids. Apparently, he's the one that uh, he's been attacking lunar patrols in the night. They reckon he's the he reckon he's the uh, little Jack Krovac, but. I can't say it myself. The little what? Little Jack Krovac, you know, the vigilante who roams the street of Pavis at night dressed in the, co- the crimson back costume. Oh, do you go? <gasps> That's who we need to meet, because he'll know where the rat is. I don't like crossbows. <laughs> My parents were killed. I don't like crossbows. Guys, I might have a brilliant idea. I'm not dressing up as a no, guard. No, this is really good. But that, <laughs> that's what he said. Um, I find it highly unlikely. He, uh, I find it unlikely to have heard as the rat. As you can probably guess, I'm using the Mythic Game Master Emulator because I coded it up to give us like... <sighs> huh? Well... Unlikely. Uh, no. no. The, the strange thing about secret... Bond villain-esque bad guys is very few people have heard of them, unless you're in a Bond movie when everybody's fucking heard of them. Mm-hmm. And him. I, I go in the corner shop. Uh, do you know where Blofeld is? Oh, he's got that sick base up on that volcano over there, down on <laughs> South Street. <laughs> the one without the smirk. Is it worth staying here tonight, seeing as though we know what's going to happen with these assassins? What we should or... Is it none of our business? The guild. Well, well. So as far as you can t- as ascertain, nobody you by your reputation. Obviously, you've been asking around uh, bars and what have you. But mm-hmm. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, really? If there's nobody in this house apart from him, why would they hire the assassins to go? In? If there was something they wanted to steal, they wouldn't hire the assassins. They'd be hiring someone from the Thieves Guild, surely. What colour shall we make Bob's Bison Burgers? A nice brown colour. Yeah. Blood red. <laughs> well, I did well, the I jokes in red because he's a filthy lunatic. My lungs are fluting. Okay, dog. Bob's Bison <laughs> Burgers. I'll, I'll rate about me purse and drop ten loners into this little old fella's hand and say, look, next time you go out for a bit of shopping, get yourself something a bit better than what you normally do. He says, "Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, Lord. Uh, I never believed what the what the uh, the lunars and the masters would you would say about you. You're you're lovely folk. I've I've never mm-hmm. met a, a bad duck yet. Uh-huh. He says, "I'll uh, so so. Do you want the bedrooms making up in case, or do you just want to sleep?" In- well, I'll tell you what. If you get the bed out, we'll make our own beds up, save you the trouble. Mm-hmm. Right, he says, uh, right, I'll, I'll do that now. Um, and he, he, he goes off into one of the stories. 
pattern of the benches. Um, you see, like uh, the the furniture, all of like the vases and stuff like that's gone. There's uh, dust covers over some of the, uh, the the larger furniture items that have been left, uh, and it looks like obviously the Duke's packed up and and nashed off and just keeps the townhouse. It would be unusual for the for them to leave it completely unguarded, but the Duke hasn't been back here in two years now. I think I actually have a map of the place, to be honest. In all seriousness, if we're going to crash out tonight, do you not think we ought to nip out the local spa and do a bit, do a bit of shopping for them? Yep, sounds good to me. I mean, it could just be me, but the impression I get is he's, he's, he's not the happiest bloke at being left all on his toad. Yeah. And if we are going to crash here, I think we should definitely keep an eye on that uh, wall entrance just in case. And also, he could come in quite useful because he's a way in to all the servants' gossip. Yeah. Keep them happy. And you, I, and you kind of tell me that servants don't know everything that's going on. Yeah. Ooh, I wonder if Bob's bison burgers do take out. <laughs> or even if they well, deliver. Yeah. Uh, uh, they don't deliver, but people people often send servant servants there. <clears> to, uh... I have returned. Welcome back. Right, so, uh, so, uh, Meloise's gone and, and got the bed now, to Andy, and he said you would make your own beds. Uh, like you led into the, the large central orgy room with the shears launchers, and like there's a, a water feature in the middle, and like, uh, the shears launchers have got their uh, covered, like dust covers thrown over them. There's like eight bedrooms lead off from this central room, and he comes out with armfuls of, uh, of bedding for you. He says you can sleep in any any room you like. Obviously not the master bedroom, that's that's the Duke's uh, place, but the, the rest of them, it's, it's normally open house when we're in this room. This water feature, is it one of them sort of little little pools with a fountain in the middle type it's of thing? Sleep in it's, got, it's got a little cherub that's that's pitling into the into the um, the little cherub <laughs> wings that's pitling into the, the fountain. Oh, bless him. <laughs> I'll have Please a bath. tell me you're sleeping in that. <coughs> no, but I'm gonna have a bath. I, I've seen I've seen a budgie that's had a bath. It's like, <coughs> as 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 Andy's feathers go everywhere. <laughs> yep, yep, ducks are pretty much the same. Um, right. So, uh, not not sure whether people are supposed to be watching you or not. Uh, at this, but uh, Andy strips all of his gear off, so he's completely Donald Duck naked. And uh, proceeds to have a bath. Uh, as, as he sits in the thing, the little boy, the, the little cherub's pee comes over, like lands on his head, runs down his beak, and then he sort of blows a stream of water out from his uh, beak. He's just sitting there under the thing while the, while the cherub pees onto his head. It's very relaxing. It's lovely, <laughs> in fact. I look at it, I'll just go, kind of reminds you of home, doesn't it? Totally. <laughs> First time I've been properly clean since we left. Right. So, uh, is there anything else you want to do here? We'll come back here for the night, but we need to quickly nip out and talk to a man about a rat. Mm -hmm. I'm going <clears> to <throat> pick up some uh, supplies for the guy on the way yeah, back. Yeah, we'll, we'll spend some lunars on some mm -hmm. nice grub for him. Particularly since it's going to be your home away from home. Yeah. It's like, oh, you can well, imagine, he's... just right Ron's going to be like, um, we've had visitors since I was here last. Yes. They built an extension. <laughs> <laughs> just moved on in there. Uh, um, 
you didn't go in the chest marked ladies delicates in the uh, octagonal room, did you? <laughs> no, nope. crazy like a cosh in there. <laughs> That's not a cosh. Right, so next cunning plan. Because at the moment, you're dragging uh, Bourbon, Alan, and Nan round with you. Well, what we should do is we'll wait here and Bracey can go talk to his people and see if he can find where we can meet the rat. I don't know if anyone wants to go and watch his back. Do you, does anybody know in Acrobat Radar how the hell you mark? Because it would be so much easier if I had bookmarked all of these. Not a clue. I'm not allowed to use computers. I know, because you break them. Yes. Oh. I look around the room, uh, the audio room for a porn tash. I'm going to put a disguise on. Uh, they, don't, they don't have porn tashes. They'll oh. have... Uh, believe it or not, they'll have carved wooden masks. Um, they're not just lying about. Obviously, that there's like uh, a chest in the corner with a with a tarpaulin sort of thrown over the top of it. <laughs> Why? Oh, you, you, if you want a pawn tash, you can just grow one. You know that, don't you? You're a big boy now. Well, yeah, I can't in the, like the couple of minutes before I go out walk on the streets by myself. You can cast illusions, illusionary pawn tash. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to disguise yourself, there's got to be some kind of skill. I'm sure yeah. we can find a skill that'll disguise you with. Oh, I've got disguise. That'll obviously, do it. Obviously, need something to disguise myself. He's looking for props. Yeah. Well, I'll right. tell you what, if you want to go to the Thieves Guild, I'll follow you at a distance and keep an eye on your mm -hmm. back. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. And then we'll head back here. And then Shashelian, Andy, um, you are both here, Matty, so you to the temple, or Andy could just stay in the fountain and get paid on all afternoon. I'll, I'll go to the temple, do a bit of worship. I'll go out and do a bit shopping. Okie dokie. We'll leave there. I'll have a quiet word with Grandma. Nana, all of this stuff has been found already. It doesn't need help finding itself. Right, you you saying that, um, and she's like got, got the the tarpaulin lifted up for the chest, the uh, with the like wooden mask, and she's like, oh, oh, really? I, I just thought I'd saw a mouse running down here. That's all. No, 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 no. She says, "Am I? Are you leaving me here to relax like a, a lady?" Yeah, you you relax like a lady, and Alan, you keep an eye on Alan, right? And and she goes. But but it's it's one of them lunar palace things. They've got indoor plumbing, and I'm dying to snap a log off. Go on, <laughs> go on, go on, do that. Man. When she goes to lay cable, I'll turn to uh, uh, Alan and go. Keep an eye on your nana. She's a nutter. He says, "Wait, no, da, I, I will." And like she's, you know, when people are putting the, the, the fake airs on and she's like, Melody, lead me to the toilet. And she's like flouncing along. And he sort of rolled his eyes at you. And she's like, indoor plumbing. Ah, oh, the luxury. And I, then I should disappear <laughs> off towards the toilet. Well, that'll keep him busy for probably the rest of his life. Yep. King Kong's little finger. That's all I can say. Right, I will follow you as you from a distance, mm -hmm. and I'm just, you know. Well, I'll show you on the map where it is first, yeah. just in case you lose this, so you know where you're going. Right. Well, the the, the person that you where have a contact is. with is, um. Right, the the one that you contacted before, um, the gang's called Harley's Men, and they're a bunch of second story men, um, which means they break in and nick stuff out of the burgle places. Mm -hmm. So you, how this page bookmark you see? So you head off. Um, and you will presumably be 
wanting to make a contact. Uh, they'll they'll have a, a local hideout. I will find it at some point, uh, and they'll they'll have a lookout stand on the stairs. If you make a, a scan roll, no. I'm not watching. What I'm just watching the area around him in case anyone has a go at him. Are you following him dead cash style? I'm I'm like 20, 30 yards back from him. I'm not like follow following him, if you know what I mean. I'm just right. doing the so, same so thing. So the, the back entrance you went the last time, Bracey, there's no, there's no guard outside. I've got Dag with us, though. You've got Dag with you. Got me Dag for a whack. Nobody there. Ooh. Nobody no, that you see. No, the that see. Right. I take it we'll have some sort of like, you know, thieves language or whatever. There's no thieves language, but I believe as a thief you get some kind of so it'll be a mark with a, a particular wood scratched on it, or it'll be some kind of what whatever you like, a, a leather strap with a series of knots in, it's up to you. Kind of mark you have. I don't know. It's just to let let them know that oh, I'm obviously one of them if I'm being watched, you know, and not like twat as I come through the door sort of thing. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I don't know, take out my mark thing and casually look at it, then put it away again, and then I'll head up the stairs. Right, you get halfway up the stairs, gives a little roll. Yep. Right, just you hear the creak of a stair behind you, just mm-hmm. as you feel a, a, the prick of a dagger in your back, and a mm-hmm. guy goes... You went in the wrong place, pal. I'll raise my hands up. Um, will I know the name of the guy who I'm who I was meeting? You you've met a guy before, uh, but you didn't. You haven't met the leader of the gang, who is Harley. There's a 50-50 chance you've actually met this one before. Yes, you know you've, you you recognise the guy's voice. What I'm doing the last time you. Okay. Um. I'll very slowly like turn my head around, look at him, and go, "Hello, mate. How you doing?" Oh, he says, it's Matt Levin. You scared the bloody Jesus out of me there. <coughs> yeah, sorry, I mate. Thought, I thought it was the Rosas going to come and pinch us. <laughs> Not a chance, mate. Not a chance. Is um, the boss in? Need a bit of a shifty. Wow, exceptional. Yes, uh, he says... Yeah, actually, the boss is upstairs. Uh, we just planned the job. Oh. Can uh, one of your lads nip up and let him know? I need to have a quick word with him about Summit. He says, i got, I got to pat you down, mate, if the boss is in its uh, procedure. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, mate. No problem. I understand. Go ahead. So he pats you down. He's like, yeah, dagger, coppers. Yeah, that's okay. Strangling wire. Yeah, crowbar. Yeah, see, everything seems in order, mate. Everything seems in order. Cool, mate. Cool. I'll just yeah. head on up, or yeah. wait, you wait he, here? He takes you up. He says, uh, come on up. He leads you up into a, into a, like a dirty ramshackle upstairs room. Uh, there's a, a rough, rough and old table in the centre. There's a bunch of guys all standing around it. The 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 work hard looking at like people that you wouldn't remember, so they're all just sort of uh-huh. shabby, grey, like they they even like make their faces covered in ash and stuff, so they don't stand out. Mm-hmm. At the end, there's a guy, a guy with sort of a hook nose and like a furrowed brow, the uh, grey hair, and he's like, "What we got here then?" And he says, uh, 
the other lads is uh, uh it's McLovin. He came in there late like a year ago. He's uh, he's got the mark. He's one of the uh, he's one of the brothers. He says, "You all right? What do you want?" And you can see there's like a, a cow skin parchment laid out on the table uh, with a map of the a rough map of the city. Mm-hmm. And it's got more things on your map. There's like underground tunnels and there's like roof mark, marks on things like that. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm just having a bit of information, actually. Someone's is, uh, one off me, and now I'm finding a little bit of fence at the back. He says, uh, uh, all right, uh, I'm, I'm Harley, and I live the second story men in Pevis. Nice to meet you. He says, it's a pleasure to meet one of the brothers. Always, mate, always. I was- What's your reputation? I'm going to roll My your reputation. Rep- 17. He says, it's nice to meet somebody who's just joined the f- to run the 98. <laughs> Matt Lavin, never heard of him. That's kind <laughs> of it's like, that's the way I like to keep it. All right, okay, make a scan roll. The sort of... Oh, fuck. All right. Uh, he, he 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 rolls over the uh, the other that uh, was laid out, just leaving the city map laid mm-hmm. out, and he's like, "What can I do for you, brother?" Says, "I'm after a bit of information, mate. Someone, like I said, somebody's trying to off me, and I've uh, heard there's a contract out on me, so we're trying to find out why. And all we've got is a name, so we want to go pay him a visit." Uh, what's the name? He says, uh, I've heard uh, there's a contract. Uh, it's bringing you in alive, though. If somebody yeah. wants a word with you. Yeah, yeah. Is it the rat? At this, make, uh, make an insight check. Insight roll. Oh, no. No. Right, he sort of starts a bit and says, the rat... I know him. You'll never find the rat. Uh, and then one of his mates goes, Hey, boss, didn't you, didn't you work for the rat? And yeah, he's like, Yeah, it was a long time ago. We got, we got some bad blood between us, all right? He says, You'll never find the rat unless he wants to find you. The rat, he's a uh, rat by name, rat by nature, lives down in the sewers. There's miles and miles of sewers down there. Yeah. He says, uh, the the contract uh, the contract out for you if uh, if you if it's known that somebody's got you then uh, the rat will come looking for you. Right. Do you know anywhere where his boys hang out? He says, nah, the man's a bloody ghost, isn't he? He says, I, I, can put the, I can put the feelers out that, uh, that I've caught you and uh, then they'd come looking for you to, to come and collect you. Okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, if you can, mate, if you can. This is, of course, have to be worth me a while, you know what I mean? Patsy's, oh, little, yeah. Patsy's little pouch. Uh-huh. Ooh, I'll have a, I'll have a fish me. What do you reckon? Oh, 20 lunas, Earl? Yeah. Uh, a bit more. If I can start low, go high. I'll start at 20 lunas. Right, okay, make a bargain roll. Go. <laughs> he says, 20 lunas, I wouldn't turn your mum in for 20 lunas, you slag. <laughs> Well, I went to Bob's fucking burgers. Rather blasted. He says, Bob's burgers? Bloody thief he is. They call me a bloody thief. <laughs> he right, says, but, put... the, but they're so good, it's the little grisly bits in it. They're the oh, best bits. Yeah. The juicy bits. Oh, man. Gives you another... something to chew on when you've <laughs> actually left. <laughs> I took another 10 lunas down. 
Right, go on. Make a bargain roll with a bonus of 10 then. So that's... He says, we're getting in the area. Like, tell you what, make another 10 lunas and uh, I will happily, happily hand you in. You will, uh, of course, have to be tied up, son. Um, Because I I don't know beef with a rat. Do you know what I mean? 10 lunas? Fucking hell. Anyone think you're a fucking thief? Ugh, one of the other guy goes, hey, the boss put you as a thief. He goes, shut the fuck up, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took another 10 minutes or something. Right. Uh, he says, okay, yeah, I'll put the feelers out, son. Just tell me when you want to hand you in. Okay, mate. Just to let you know, we're staying down at Wilston. Um, uh, in Salt Street. Gimpies. Gimmies. We're, saying, well, uh, we're staying down at Gimmies, mate. He says, uh, oh, a bit, bit of a there. Uh, fancy some adventure in Strange, do you? you yeah, get some, yeah, you know. Job get, you some of them, get you some of them storm bullet birds in with a bit of, uh, bit of muscle on them. <laughs> yeah, the job run now, you know, I'm sick of all this killing and saying, we'll fancy a bit of adventure. He says, it's a fucking mugs game, mate. Fucking mugs game. <laughs> says, tell you what you want to open fucking brothel in here isn't it all these bloody lunar soldiers all the wives 200 bloody leagues away ain't they uh, got nothing to do pouches full of lunar silver yeah. tell you what it is when I make enough money I'm opening a bloody brothel <laughs> oh my for some, buy some shares and not me buy some shares right I'll uh, give them another go much obliged mate much obliged Right, just uh, let me know. I'll uh, I'll I'll send you a message to Gimpies. Okay, mate. Much appreciated. Right, and I'll head off then. Right, okay. Make a listen roll just before you go. Success. Success. You just hear one of the. One of the guys is talking to him, like, very, as you're halfway down the stairs, he goes, um, but why would the Black Fang want a bloody scroll? And he goes, shut the fuck up, you. It's not, it's not up to us. He says, we're just a procurer, isn't we? We don't give a shit what it is. And then you, yeah. you head down. Right. Earl Brissy emerges from the place without any stab wounds. I hang back, wait to see if he's been followed. And then where did his head? Back to? Back to the villa. Back yeah. to the villa. Right, yeah. okay. You head back to the villa. Uh, I'll just see. Right, you're not recognised on the way home. Just say Bressy like getting mobbed in the street. That's a bastard. Kill him. Right, Andy, <laughs> so what, what What? would you like to procure in, in this? This is like a proper tourist town. Um, you're literally running around in a Hawaiian shirt with a, a knotted hanky on your head. Anything's for sale in Pavis? Just in the loop. Well, I think I need to go somewhere like a farmer's market. Right. You know, because I, I, I need sort of, you know, like hams and chickens and veg and fruit and bread and all this sort of shite. Yeah, there's a, there's an, a, a huge, like, market with ornaments permanently set up in the centre of town. <clears throat> Oh, actually, so much just occurred to me. You know all the weird creatures there are in Round Quest. Sorry, it's, it's it's a bit off topic. This that's fine, yeah. There isn't anything like um, because you know how like we ride zebras and like the morocans look like, oh, what they call them, tapirs. Yes. There isn't anything like a kangaroo in this, is there? Not in this area, but the, like further out, there was some really weird shit. Like uh, there's a place called Creolia, which is like got Chinese stuff, so uh, probably somewhere there's bound to be something that looks like a kangaroo. Because I've just thought of a nice little business opportunity. What we need to do is we need to go there, catch some, bring them back here, train them, have a word with Bob and we'll start a delivery service. And it will be <laughs> delivery room. <laughs> delivery room. <laughs> I, I, I shared in that. I love it. I love it. I love it, love it. That's what I'm doing when I retire. Deliveroo. <laughs> right. So you head down to the market. 
because they've even got a pouch to carry the burger in. They have, yes. And it'll keep it warm. Say, I've thought this through. You've got multiple vaginas, you know. He hasn't thought it through that much. <laughs> All right, so I shall head to the farmer's market and basically what I want is the, the easiest way to put it is, like, not totally sumptuous, but, you know, decent, good Picnic food. Scran. Aye, sort of in, enough for a feast of, for about for about ten, for about three days. And whatever we don't eat, we'll leave for uh, Meliwe and that last him till he gets his pay. And you know, we'll try and I'll try and buy a couple of luxuries for him, like a decent bottle or something. Yes. Um. Because I feel a bit sorry for the poor bloke left looking after that gaff all on his tod. Bit rough, like. Right. So you, you spend uh, a couple of hours. Uh. Because you don't, you can get it done quicker, but you have a good look around. You have a look at one of those stalls, like little knick, wooden knickknacks and stuff in there. And like, they're no use for anything, but you're like, oh, doesn't that kind of look like a swan? Oh, look, a carved honey spoon. I've always wanted one of them. <laughs> nah, nah, you do not need a carved honey spoon. And, and of course, while I'm doing that, I want to keep an eye out just in case I'm attracting any attention. Uh, yeah, go on, make us an insight and a, uh, insight and scan. Insight and scan, right, hang on a minute. This is all going to go horribly wrong at this point, but never mind. Wait a minute, insight. There's an insight. Oh, bloody hell. Success. And a scan roll. Oh, 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 oh. Critical. Oh, wow. Uh, don't forget to tick everything. Uh, right, so you wander around the market. Right, um, there's a, a, a vast amount of humanoids. You do, however, notice there's an actual scent off full on walking down through a farmer's market, carrying several sacks presumably of wares or grain or something it doesn't look like it doesn't look like a, an adventuring type or anything and he like politely nods and says hello to a few people as he wanders past but he hasn't recognised you for anything I'm checking your reputations uh, the general feeling you get is uh, relaxed sort of the way that when people go around a, a market on a weekend that you don't pick up any bad vibes of anybody and you don't see anybody like waiting in the wings with a big sword to stab you or chop any bits off you or anything. Jolly good. Um, just out of curiosity, because my, my own quest knowledge is, is a bit thin on the ground, uh, are centaurs particularly rare or noteworthy? They're not super rare. You, uh, the pot, you have fought one and there were a couple of centaur guards on the... Uh, route on the caravan over, but they're not usually inside of cities or things like that. So it's just a bit unusual, something that you've you've seen that you weren't expecting. Not that I want to put words in your mouth, but is it the sort of thing that I would sort of note down and tell the lads later, or, or would I maybe follow them? Um, it's it's probably just uh, a curiosity, to be honest. Um, right, in that case, I, I shall just file it away in the curious knowledge bank and, and mention it to the lads when I get home. No problem. Unless, of course, the centaur happens to be going in the same direction I'm going in. Uh, I would say unlikely, so we'll find out. Exceptional, yes. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's actually gone uh, straight north uh, down Parade Way. Um, he's got a load of sacks and stuff. He seems to be heading towards uh, straight north towards the gate to get out. Well, I, sh I shall introduce myself and ask him if he minds a little bit of company on his walk through the city. Uh, 
uh, he says, uh, no, uh, well met there. Uh, he, he's also a beast for, um, so you at least share that. You, you share the beast rune rather than the man rune. Uh, he seems a little surprised and he's like, uh, no, no, feel free to join me. I'm just heading back out. Uh, we're camped outside of the walls in the, the main campground. Come and get some fresh food as we have, we've been eating trail rations for weeks. Funnily enough, I'm doing exactly the same thing myself. I thought it was unusual to find one of what one of you you gentlemen in inside the city. He says, Have you travelled uh, far? Um, we've uh, we've come across the long dry, to be honest. Um, from the paps, there's there's rumours of something running round out there in the long dry and. Obviously, my kind can travel quite long distances, so we have uh, we were hired to go and have a look. But other than some unusual marks on the floor, we couldn't find anything, to be fair. Um, now, does that ring a bell? Maybe. Uh, somewhere in the depths of the player's mind, that rings a bell. But I can't quite place it. Uh, obviously, centaurs can travel like long distances. That um, being part of the wilderness, so they're pretty good at tracking, pretty good at checking out natural areas and things like that. Yeah, no, I was I was thinking of like you know not finding anything other than strange marks in the ground because I've just get this feeling we've done that. Yeah, strange that. Yeah. Wait a minute. What? What? Why? What? I missed. Say that again. He's where? Where have the centaur come from? Uh, well, uh, Andy hasn't told you this. I, I assume right. he'll tell you later on because he's he's busy walking up Parade right. Vieira with the centaur. Um. So yeah, he says. But you know what? It, it is. It's a job's a job. I mean, particularly in these times, um, you just got to oh, take what yeah. you can get. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. You would not believe some of the things we've had to do for money. He says, "I believe it." He says, uh, "Us beast folk, we uh, we have to stick together." He says, um, uh, "My mate, strong hoof, the Minotaur. Uh, he had, he had to take uh, take up dancing in one of the inns one once to uh, to pay for a meal." Um, Funnily enough, he got loads of tips. I, I, I don't understand it. He can't dance. They gave well, him a fe feather boar uh, and, and some bard sort of cranked out a tune on a, a, a lute and away he went, stomping about. Between you and me, I've made a bit of money in a similar sort of fashion. Only I was singing and I kind of sing. He just looks and cuts humans, shrugs his shoulders. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so basically, you come up level with the uh, with the thing, and he's uh, and are you stopping off there? Um, yes, I shall. I shall bid him good fortune and all the rest of it, and then I shall go off back to the the Duke's house. He says, uh, "It's nice to meet you all and uh, each other." In Uh, and then, uh, like, sort of clops off up the up the street towards the uh, W two gate. Uh, right, Davy, what did what were you doing? I was going to the temple for prayer. Right. Uh, you head to the temple of the Humact. Um, it's supposed to be a gigantic cross. Uh, I don't think it is on this one for some reason. If I remember rightly. But it's supposed to be in the shape of a, a cross. You've got the temple at the top, um, the Holy Sanctum, where you all go and pray. Um, and to the left, you've got the Mercenary Hiram Hall. To the right, you have um, the like the places, the rooms where the the initiates and in that sleep that are assigned to temple duty. Uh, you go in, and do you where, which way do you head? What? Which way do you where where are you heading in the temple? Uh, to, where, where where do you go in the prayer? Like right straight to the end, if you imagine, because the death runs across, it's the shape of a crucifix. 
So basically, you'll you'll go straight on to the end, um, and that's where the temple is. There's a great, uh, an enormous bronze replica of uh, the sword Death, which is like a giant two-handed flambergier with a skill, skull on the end, the, like the full height of the room. There's little pews that are ranged out in front of it. Um, there's always a few initiates there. Uh, there's a room priest there as well, but he's not in the actual cathedral bit. So, well, I shall go out and pray. Um, sit and contemplate for a bit, then I check the mercenary board, see if it's out interesting. Uh, you check the mercenary board. Let's see if there's anything interesting. Um, no, there's nothing exceptional. There are uh, the usual, uh, the usual guard, uh, guards wanted. Please uh, apply for this to travel across a, a convoy towards Sartre. Um, bandits raiding farmstead need mercenaries. That kind of thing. Nothing that it's just general stuff. It's nothing that you go, all right. That's that's something exceptional or something we we should take notice of. Right. And I, I suppose I'll head back to um, the Duke's place. Right, okay, if you want to make a worship roll, because you've been for a bit of a prayer. <laughs> no, no, if you succeed at a worship roll, in it, um, like you get a critical success or whatever, you can power gain roll from worshipping. Everybody say, right, we all got the temple. I want to make a, a Eulerian so you can just go for a good worship. <laughs> So, where did where does it come under? Magic. Uh, like 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 Timmy Mallet's parrot magic. <laughs> I bet you're awful, are they? Actually, no, no, Dave's pretty good at worship. Right, Dave, Dave, Dave has a. Obviously, your recent journey to the land of the dead did you some good. Gives you a new perspective, uh, and you head back. So, as if, as if by plot magic, you all seem to arrive back at the mansion at the same time. Um, you you, you knock on the door. He's, he lets you in, and you you, you led straight into the mansion. Uh, Nan comes running up, and she she's waving this stick with a sponge on the end, and she's going, "Cronan, guess what you use this for?" <laughs> Cleaning the wall. She goes, you wipe your ass with it. We have to get some of these. What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong? I didn't like these lunar ideas. What's wrong with leaves? She says, I know, but it's soft and it doesn't scratch you. And that time in the summer when we got poison ivy by mistake. You right there. That was she's a bit like, she's like, <laughs> you've, she's like, you've got to try it and waves this sponge on a stick in front of your face. I'll go out and have a try. I'll go off and have a dump and a try. <laughs> Right, so uh, uh, ten minutes later, Earl comes back uh, with a very tender look on his face. Uh, a sponge seems to work wonders. Uh, An indoor plumber, Earl. Indoor plumbing. You, you don't crap weird. in a bucket and tip it out of the window. This is very, very weird. It, it, it's really, really, really quite upsetting. I mean, not everything the lunars do is bad, but. Everybody, everybody goes bad. like that, and like but, everybody and go, pauses. And... But everything the lunars do is bad. I think this is just sort some sort of backside way of roping us into their shenanigans. I think they're trying to make our backside soft. That's what it is. They're trying to soften us up. Real men use nettles. I'll have none of this. Earl died a rich man. He imported sponges on sticks into Sartar and revolutionised the toilet industry. <laughs> well, right. So, do you do you all share your experiences around town, or does yes. anybody want to conceal anything? No. no, 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 no. I want to share everything. I will spill my guts. You just did. And one time. Uh, right, okay then. So now that you each know this information, Dave tells you there's not nothing out of the ordinary in the humanity temple, and he tells you about this weird centaur guy. Um he met did, coming from the founders market. Where did the the weird centaur guy say that he found the marks or something? 
he just said they had been asked to go or travel around the long dry and and look for something. There's something out there. Was that where we found that weird area? I don't know. Was it? I don't think I don't so. I can't remember. Wasn't it, there a it weird, weird sa- area that we came across? It does sound like something we've come across that, though, doesn't it? It does sound like it'll end up being our fault. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, that as well. Probably true, to be honest. Nah, that was like six months ago. I'd never planned something. <laughs> ah, you're right. Uh-huh. Right, so yes, it, he just said the, the, there's supposedly something out there. His band of centaurs obviously can move long distances really quickly, and they're good at tracking and things like that. They've been sent to run around the long drive to find something. He didn't say who his employer was, but like li- literally the ominous, there's something out there in the long dry. Um, uh, he said weird marks on the ground it's it's the earth disturbed in strange circular patterns um uh, bracy tells you that uh the only way that the rat is in the sewers the only way they get contact is he needs to turn himself in to harley's men who are, are going to pretend well he thinks they're going to pretend uh to ha- to tie him up and hand him in um, However, for the reward trust, i trust him further than that Least well, the well, the tricksters. So you shouldn't yeah, exactly. like you should barely trust yourself. To be fair, <laughs> and I also let them know about what I heard about them with the Assassins Guild and the uh, the parchment for the scroll. And as yeah. we know, the Assassins Guild is out for, you know to for a job on here. It might be worth asking. Uh... I'll ask Melanie if there's a scroll, important scroll in the house somewhere. He says uh, uh, every everything's been moved out. He says uh, it's just the only place that's uh, left is the master's main bedroom, which is locked and and nobody's allowed in. Uh, I don't even have a key for it. How many entrances are there to that? Just the one. There's no windows or anything. Nine. There's just the one locked door. So, any any other plans other than uh, tie tie and brace up and throwing them to the wolves? Or I think we should tomorrow tie brace up and throw them to the wolves. If that doesn't work, we should find the Batman. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, that's trademarked. You mean Little Jack Krovac? Little Jack Krovac, the red Batman. Which is which is Macedonian for Batman. The Crimson Batman. <laughs> yeah, he's the Crimson Batman, please. Um, my, my parents are dead. I'm very sad. I don't, I don't like us. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah, but, I, do you have a particular reason? I mean, I'm happy to let you find look for the bat if you want, but... Is there there is a super villain living in the sewers called the rat and there is a man or woman who is flying around fighting crime dressed in a red cape it's obviously connected okay <laughs> or, it could, or it's just my, my really bored it's just my warped and twisted imagination possibly mm. <laughs> Well, I think we should keep tonight, and then tomorrow we'll have a fresh start, and uh, we'll uh, throw Brissy to the wolves. Right, okay. Um, so, it's it's half past ten, so we'll do a last bit of planning. Is there anything else you want to plan beforehand? Um, yeah, I'm going to sleep in front of the door to that room. Right. Okay, you're gonna like drag one of the shears lunges. You know when you you across the lovely marble tiled floor, and like uh, when there's like like wincing and looking, and like he's got and it like drags this across the marble tile, dumps the shears lunge in front of the door. Yep. 
Uh, right. Uh, anybody else? Do, do we do we have any plans for Bracey? Or are you just gonna like? Yeah. Turn what we're gonna do or? is he's. We're gonna wait until they make an arrangement for a meeting to hand him over, and then we're just gonna turn up for a chat. Right. Is there any magical way we could put a like a tracking device on him? I do not believe so. I will check up for you, but I don't think there is. Um, Feck and Dag could find him. Yeah, Feck and Dag could find him. Well, that's a point. Yeah, just get a cup, just get a pair of his spare underpants that he's used. No, Feck and Dag no. is not sniffing his kecks. McLovin has no spare underpants. He has his one good Sunday set. Um, no underpants. And, and and the Sunday set is the ones he wears Monday to Saturday and then turns them inside out on the Sunday. That's his Sunday underpants. You Same can always you. get an extra day out if you turn them inside out. That is true. <clears throat> right, okay. Uh like brief brief plan, yeah. Are you gonna you're gonna follow behind with Feck and Dag? Um yep. Right, okay. Um, you'll have to go out at night. Um, it's half past ten. Should we leave it there? And then Ryan will be next time for the plan for the meeting. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm yeah. All right, okay then. Uh, we'll call it there then, because I'm enjoying this. And then next time we'll jump straight to it's night. Uh, Bracey's going to the guild, and then we'll go straight into the the sewers. Rescuing Bracey from the clutches of the rat. Or no, no, it's more likely ending up working for the rat. <laughs>